Living in southern Norway, you feel Russia is a million miles away. It's hard to imagine that the two countries border each other, but somehow they do. You see, if you drove north from Oslo without crossing any borders, you'd eventually arrive in Russia. There is just one border crossing, and since the war in Ukraine, it's the only border within the Schengen area to be kept open, albeit limited to who can actually cross over. It's steeped in spy stories and secrecy, on the Norwegian side, a live-in watchtower known as OP247 is monitored by the Norwegian military 24 hours a day. On the Russian side, we have no idea what goes on, and even Google Street View is disabled. I certainly can't cross over, nor would I want to under the current circumstances. Nevertheless, I can cycle along it. You see, there is an old half-gravel, half-paved road dating back to the 19th century that follows the border all the way to the Barents Sea. If you're wondering why the borderline is squiggly, it follows a small, shallow river dividing the two countries. On certain road sections, you are less than 25 meters from Russian territory. This is the line between the East and the West. And with tensions between the two civilizations as high as they've been in decades, perhaps this is not the time to visit. But having traveled up to Kirkenes and cycled Varanga Peninsula, it would have been rude not to experience the road where NATO and Russia collide. Let's just hope nothing goes wrong. Well, good morning from Kirkenes. We are off to the Russian border today. Ready? No, no, we're not ready. We're a bit tired from three days of hardcore riding. We'll figure something out. Let's go. Russian border, here we come. Let's begin with some tense, dramatic music to heighten the drama. The border is only 15 kilometers from Kirkenes, and the first thing you notice is the bikes in the bushes. You can't walk across the border, so people come on bikes, and I guess they just sleep here in the bushes. I have no idea. Do you know more? Let me know. We're at the Russian border. I'm not actually sure if we're allowed to film here, but they just keep filming until I get arrested, basically. It's really surreal because there's no cars coming down here. I was obviously on our own. There's no one here right now. It's like a ghost town. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just very, very strange. Yeah. Oh, we've got a car. Someone's going to Russia. Then you have the weird, creepy gift shop, which is abandoned and looks like something out of a horror movie. But once we get onto the border road, things brighten up. It's a beautiful ride crossing over a small little mountain range with some incredible geographical wonders on offer. Indeed, this area is old, I mean really old. This mountain here is 2.9 billion years old. Just saying. But we've got no time for climbing. Unfortunately, things get serious again when we see the Norwegian Navy in the fjord we're passing by. No drones here, my friend. And also, we have a lot of signs on this road. Many new ones since the conflict with Ukraine. Just so you're aware, it is prohibited to cross the border by land, water and air, to make contact across the border, to make offending action towards slash across the border, to remove damage or destroy the border marks, to photograph Russian military personnel and equipment in an aggressive or... You better be on your best behaviour. So this is where the tarmac ends and the gravel begins. The last 10Ks. You see the bushes on the other side of the river? That is Russia, just 20 meters away. And it's at this point when we start to hear branches breaking on that side of the river. I quickly put my camera down. I better turn it off. What if it's a Russia border guard, armed, stood 20 meters away from us, just staring at us? What if he's having a bad day or doesn't like my YouTube channel? This is a really weird situation to be in. As the noises get louder, I think my heart stopped beating. Who is in the bushes? I have to remain calm. Let me demonstrate what happened. <sighs> it was just a reindeer. What I do to make a YouTube video, eh? 
Nearly there, five Ks. Five Ks of this. This beautiful chapel was built to stake Norway's claim to this land. Nice idea. The last road in Norway. Coming to an end. The locals informed us that you have to dip your toes in the Barents Sea. Apparently it gives you good luck. It's even military here. With big guns. But luckily they're Norwegian. I think they're Norwegian. I hope so. We're closer to the North Pole than Oslo. 2,538 kilometers to Oslo and 2,331 to the North Pole. All right! Goodbye, Arctic! With that seamless transition, we arrive back at Kirkenes Airport, having completed the Arctic East 700. It's been three and a half days of pure adventure, experiencing 700 kilometers of one of Europe's most sparsely populated areas. Looking back on the journey, we knew from our plane seats that this area would be special to ride. The E6 was in perfect condition, with wide open vistas all around. The Norwegian scenic route Veranga took us completely by surprise with endless ocean views, flat roads and a feeling of cycling on the edge of the world. And the last part to Hammingsburg was just wow. The remote Arctic tundra in the north lived up to its reputation and of course the road to the Russian border was well worth the journey. Norway just doesn't do boring. Having said all that, at 70 degrees north, this is a fragile and unpredictable world. You're not guaranteed anything. It could be 30 degrees, it could be minus three. Calm as a Hindu cow or blowing gale force winds. Booking a trip like this requires either flexibility or time, or even better, both. I'm not gonna lie, this was an expensive long weekend for a domestic trip, but we certainly don't regret a single krona spent. Life is short and time flies by. If opportunities present themselves, you have two options. Action or inaction. <laughs>